Good morning. Butch Eichels, the Country Church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. How about our young adults here on the front row this morning? Wow, so refreshing to see them with us as they are a part of us, right? Did you notice that it was a child that led by example today? Yes, sir. It was a child. It wasn't an adult, but a child. So keep that in mind when the invitation comes around. The real world. You live in the real world? Yeah. John chapter 12. If you have your copy of scripture, welcome those viewing online, those listening on radio. We're in John's account of the gospel, the 12th chapter. John writes... And he says, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, <laughs> but they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. He was just dead. Now they want to kill him again. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, set thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they had heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The, the same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for its power. We thank you for the promise that your word will not return empty or void but it always accomplishes the purposes that you send it forth by, and it prospers. That's our prayer this morning, Lord. I pray that as we enter this time of praise and worship, uh, for those who lead us this morning, Father, may your hand be on them. Uh, Father, that we would humble ourselves and worship you as you so richly deserve. Father, we pray for our pastor as he'll come uh, in a little while. We pray for your hand on him. He might be your mouthpiece today. Lord, we pray for souls to be saved, and we'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, faith family. Good morning. We have an opportunity today to raise our gaze. 
So let's lift our hearts and our eyes toward heaven. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Sing with me.
The King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, it's good for us to be here today. It's good for us to empty out our hearts in praise to you, yes. to tell you how much we love you, 
to tell you how much we welcome you this morning. Lord, we pray that we'd surrender all that we are to all that you are, that, Father, you'd be glorified in our midst. Father, may men and women, boys and girls, be drawn to make that decision for you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, and as people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. It's good to have each one of you, and always good to have guests. And if you're here for the first time, if you just raise your hand, the also, the, whoever these guys are, <laughs> want to extend to you a welcome packet. And if you'd be so kind as to fill them out, drop them in one of the boxes in the back. That's all you need to drop in them. Because the people next to you are going to put in several hundred in your memory. So do that. And, let me tell you something, in case you haven't realized it, this is Texas. Yes, sir. That's when we go to bed when it's 90 degrees and we <laughs> wake up and it's freezing, right? Hallelujah. Y'all think I'm merciless and callous, but I felt bad for Joan having to get out <laughs> and do the work. No, it's not easy. It's good being here, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for the young lady that made that yes. decision to follow the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's an example. She's an example to a lot of us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Brother. So for the past uh, few months, the men's ministry, we've been singing a song, and it's a it's a good men's ministry song, and it's a good song of the church based out of a passage of scripture that says, if God be for us, then who can be against us? And I tell you what, in days like today, we need to know that we're, we're marching in step with the Lord and with his heart and with his character and with his word, because if he's for us, then no matter what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what doctors are saying, what news report you're listening to if God is for us who can be against us his kingdom is coming his will is being done and we want to be found bold witnesses to that account as we go forth out into Guadalupe County and around um, so I'm not supposed to preach I'm supposed to sing so let, let me teach you <laughs> teach you how this song goes this is how the chorus section goes and men you know it so come on sing out a little bit Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? So let me see if we can get the guys in the back to put the words to the chorus up. Is that possible? It's the line that says, sing with joy now. Now. <laughs> oh, y'all don't have them? Really? All right, well, why don't y'all grab your song sheet and y'all just listen to it then, I guess. And in the meantime, y'all work on the next song. <laughs> Let me just count us all. One, two, three.
me teach you a chorus real quick. It goes like this. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our pride. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you. Sing that with me. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our pride. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes to you.
makes their way down. Let's just sing that little refrain again, all right? Sing his name. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our prize. We adore you, behold you, our Savior and Well, the real world. You ever heard someone say they're looking at the world through rose-colored glasses? In meaning, they're having some unreal expectations. I think about when I left sales management to pastor a church. And the word on the street was Butch couldn't handle the sales pressure anymore. So he got something easy like pastor in the church. Yeah, right. You ever heard chickens try to get them going in the same direction? That's just a taste of pastoring. Now I know what the real world is really all about. So in this passage, we get a double dose of the real world. Let's take a look at it. The first thought is serving, giving, and betrayal. That covers it all. Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead whom he raised from the dead, and there they made a supper. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Now, we cover the whole spectrum in this passage. We have Martha serving. And she was true to her personality. And this was possibly a thank you meal for Jesus for raising her brother from the dead. And we thank the Marthas in this church who are servants, serving the Lord in so many ways. It's something about spiritual gifts 
that we need to know. Because all of us have been given a spiritual gift or gifts. Now, don't mistake it. You don't have the spirit of contention, okay? There is no such thing. But we need to realize that our gift or gifts is not supposed to fight with other gifts. We're part of the body of Christ. And so we have gifts that are differing, differing, not more important, but different. You remember Martha coming to Jesus and she said, don't you even care that Mary has left all the work, all the serving to me? You see, we need to be careful that we don't think our gift is greater than somebody else's gift. I've had and heard conversations where people say, if that person is saved, why aren't they in Bible study? And others say, if they're so spiritual, why aren't they winning other people to Christ? And so you have the disciples and the evangelists, and they're fighting each other when they ought to realize that both of them are necessary. We can't disciple somebody that we've not led to the Lord. And when we lead somebody to the Lord, we've got a responsibility to disciple them. Oh, then there's Mary. She doesn't wait tables. I don't want to say something, ladies. I'm just going to move on here. But she gave Jesus a pound of costly perfume. And some say that it was valued at fifteen to $20,000. Others say that it was equivalent to 300 days pay. Well, either way, it was very expensive. And Mary was a giver. And how could the kingdom's work go on if it wasn't for the givers in Christ Jesus who gave over and above? And yet there's a betrayer present, and that's Judas the selfish. And I've learned a long time ago that there are people that don't have anything that are always willing to share. I read once about a church that had a business meeting and this guy got up in the middle of the meeting and he said, Preacher, what is this on the statement? We bought two brooms last month. Two brooms. What is a church this size doing with Two brooms. And he went on and on and on until finally the business meeting was over. And the preacher said to the treasurer, he said, I don't understand what was happening with brother so-and-so. He was so upset about these two brooms. And the treasurer said, preacher, don't worry about it. If everything you gave last year went to buy two brooms, you'd be upset too. <laughs> so sometimes they're the two broom people that make the noise. Well, we notice there was greed rather than glory. And Judas said, why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? And this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he had the bag, and he bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying, has she kept this. Judas no more cared about the poor than the man in the moon. He was a thief, the scripture says. He kept the bag. And 
The more that was in the bag, the more he could get out of the bag. So it wasn't about Jesus. It was about Judas. And it's amazing how oft time greed, greed takes over the thoughts of God's glory. Well, Jesus sees the motive for our giving. That's one reason why the widow's might is so prominent in Scripture. That's why Jesus took this woman and this example of what she gave over and opposed to all the wealthy that were around. That's why the scripture says that the Lord loves a cheerful or a hilarious giver. You see, Jesus said, and Luke records, that he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon or the riches, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you've not been faithful in that which another man is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? You ever had somebody say that, well, if I had this, this is what I'd do for the church? And if I had this, this is what I'd do from the for the church. You know what the scripture says? It said if they haven't been faithful in little, they won't be faithful in much. It's that simple or that complex. In a former church, and I'm glad I had a former church, because I can use all of their examples on you. And if I ever leave here and go someplace else, boy, do I have some examples. <laughs> but we had a lady who, uh, every time we were doing something around the church, Brother Floyd, she'd say, well, if we had money, this is what we'd like to do. This is what, what, what we'd like to do for the Lord's house. But... My husband, we just have a little income coming in. Well, one day I was on the east side of San Antonio and I thought, you know, I need to see my dad's cousin over here, Gus, Uncle Gus, and Aunt Desi. And I, was, I said, Uncle Gus, how are y'all doing? He said, Butch, we're doing great. He said, this is the best we've ever lived. Our house is paid for. We have this much coming in, and we live good. And I said, well, do you know so-and-so? Because I realized that they work for the same company. He said, yeah, now there's a guy that's really got some money. <laughs> He's got a tremendous income. Hmm. Hmm. Well, then on top of everything else, these people that wanted to really do something for the Lord and his church, you know what happened? This guy's aunt died in New Orleans. And way back then, 30, 40 years ago, they left him $600,000 plus property over New Orleans. Now, these are the very people that wanted to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what changed in their life? Their membership. They moved to another church that didn't know that they had this. Nothing changed. If you've been faithful in little, you'll also be faithful in much. And if you haven't been faithful in what you do have, you wouldn't be faithful with what you could have. That's what Jesus said, not me. You want to get mad? Get mad at him. Well, the plight of the poor. Jesus said, for the poor always you have with you, 
but me you have not always. You know, today we try to eliminate poverty. And I'm not being calloused about it, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's what Jesus said. Because poverty is relative. Case in point, I, I've been in countries where the poorest of the poor over here were considered rich over there. For example, I went on a mission trip to Nigeria and I was in a city of Umahaya and it was a city of over 200,000 people. And I stayed <clears throat> in the apartment of a prominent wealthy couple. This man was one of the most popular and successful lawyers in the city. And his wife was a civil court judge. And yet the apartment was substandard to our lowest project home in the United States. They had a five-gallon bucket of water next to the commode for flushing. And they drove a wore-out automobile. And it was the only automobile that the people had in the whole church. And yet they were one of the wealthiest in the city. Several years ago in a Mexican colonial, colonia, we installed a hot plate and a propane bottle plus covered a small cabinet with oil cloth. We put a door on it to keep the flies off of the stored food. And this was for a little lady whose daughter had tuberculosis. And when we finished, the lady cried. And we asked what was the matter and she said she didn't know how one person could have so much. It's all relative. For the poor, always you have with you, but me you have not always. And as we talked about in class, can you weep with those that weep and rejoice with those who rejoice? And yet the Bible says we're to continue to minister to the poor. We don't say because we're always going to have them, I'm not going to do anything to help them. And that's why we have ministries like the attic, to do what we can to help those who don't have. Well, <clears throat> there was a battle raging that sometimes we overlook and we don't see. Verse 9 says, Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. And there was a battle for Lazarus. Many came not to see Jesus, but for the dog and pony show. I didn't realize it until this last week that Jesus didn't get top billing. Not the Messiah, not the message, but the man who was raised from the dead. The phenomenal his explanation is in question. Was there something different changed in this one who was raised from the dead? We want to see Lazarus. You see, Ephesians says, and you hath he quickened and made alive, in other words, who were dead in trespasses and sin. 
If you're lost, you may feel like you're really alive. You really feel like you're skating along. But the scripture says you're dead in trespasses, in sin. And you have he quickened, made alive. <clears throat> Even today, many people don't understand the new birth. But they can't deny it having taken place. Where's this Lazarus, the one who was changed, the one who was given new life? Well, <coughs> why see Lazarus? Why did they want to see him? Because they wanted to kill him. Mark read it this morning. Because, you see, as long as Lazarus lives, He's going to draw people to Jesus Christ. It's not only that we got to get rid of Jesus, we got to get rid of Lazarus. Because just his being causes people to ask questions and causes people to be drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's really the first time I saw that, Brother Floyd, that they wanted to kill Lazarus as bad as they wanted to kill Jesus. The devil will do anything he can to keep people from sharing the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, he can't have your soul. But he sure can take away your testimony. He can sure rob you of the joy that only Jesus gives. And that's what he does. Well, the Bible talks about the glorious entry in verses 12 through 15. And something caught my eye in this passage. And I hadn't really thought about it a lot. But the Bible says, when they heard that Jesus was coming, when they heard that Jesus was coming. Did that set any bells off in your head? When they heard that Jesus was coming? Now, let me say, they were singing Hosanna on the one day, and they were hollering crucifying on the next. Well, here again, prophecy was fulfilled. It was prophesied almost 500 years earlier, and here it comes to pass. Zechariah 9.9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He's just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. And here we see it 500 years later. How many things did Jesus fulfill, prophecies, that we had no idea that it would come to pass? Some say that Jesus fulfilled over 300 prophecies. Things that were prophesied in the Old Testament were revealed in the new. Well, the question remains not whether Jesus was coming again. That was a given. But will you be ready when he comes? Will you be ready when he comes again? Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You know, isn't it interesting, David, that we sing, wait a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many lost in sin, something like that, Phil. And, and we sing that song, but nowhere does the scripture tell us to pray to Jesus to wait a little longer. What the scripture says, even so, come, Lord Jesus. 
You know why? Because today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week or not month. The Lord has given you today. And so we say, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. I love Revelation 22, 20. He which testifies these things says, surely I come quickly. Amen. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. You know, I think of the song that we, I mean, the, the prayer that we used to pray as kids growing up. And I've said before, there wasn't anything wrong with the prayer. We'd begin by saying, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. My sister and I learned to say, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Pass the potatoes. For years, I thought pass the potatoes was part of the prayer. But we're to pray, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. And it's the sign. <laughs> well, the curiosity seekers in verse 16 through 18. You know, even the disciples didn't understand the significance of the events until Jesus was glorified. The Bible says that after Jesus ascended into heaven and after the coming of the Holy Spirit of God, then they began to understand these things. Jesus said in John 14, 26 records, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. The Holy Spirit will take the word and reveal it to you. Deliver it on a silver platter. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, and the people who were there, when he, did the, when he did these things, they bear record. Eyewitnesses, incredible witnesses. They didn't come for a story or a headline, but they came for the truth. News travels fast. Gossip travels a little faster, but nevertheless, news travels fast. Fast and Lazarus made the headlines. He who was dead is now alive. You know, we ought to make the headlines. Those of us who have been saved, we were dead in trespasses and sin, but now we're alive. Verse 18 through 21 says. For this cause, the people also met him, for they had heard that he had done this miracle. And the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive you how you prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feet, and the same came therefore to Philip, which was of the Seda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Sir, we would see Jesus. Now, presumably, they had heard about the Savior from other people, and they were impressed by what they had heard, but now they wanted to see him for themselves. And they wanted to spend time with him. And they wanted to get to know him. They said in verse 19, Behold, the world has gone after him. And you know what I think? We have a stewardship of the gospel 
to share the good news. But if we don't share it, you know what will happen? The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones should immediately cry out. Jesus doesn't need my witness. I need him. And I need his gospel. And I need to share it. It's in my DNA as a believer in Christ Jesus. And if I'm not sharing it, I'm not doing what he would have me to do. On several occasions, Jesus said, Follow me and I'll make you or I'll make you to become fishers of men. You know what I realize? If I'm not fishing, I'm not following. You ever been fishing and never caught anything? Now don't lie to me. <laughs> We're in church for goodness sake. The Bible doesn't hold us responsible for catching anybody. The Bible tells us that we're to share the gospel, that we're to throw out the gospel message. And the saving is up to him. Amen. I've spent time talking to couples, and one of them was so ripe the fruit was about to fall from the tree. And the other one was as green as a gourd. Didn't have a clue. But the Lord deals with people right where they're at and leads us where we need to be. They said, behold, the world's gone after him. So this morning, everybody here, everybody here, Everybody here is either a missionary or a mission field. We're either missionary telling other people about Christ or we're a mission field and we need people to talk to us about Jesus. So which is it this morning? Do you know the Lord? I mean, really know him. At a former church, I had a lady that loved the Lord. And that's not saying I don't have any here, but <laughs> she loved the Lord and she loved his word. And she'd get a hold of me sometimes and she'd say, Preacher, do you study the Word of God? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, do you really study the Word of God? I mean, do you really, really study the Word of God? And I said, yeah, I hope so, you know. <laughs> and we need to address ourselves sometimes. Do I really love the Lord? Do I really love his word? How has it affected my life? How has it changed my life? Do you know him? Really know him personally. Not just know about him, but to know him. My earliest memory, I don't remember ever doubting Eric, that there was that God was real or that Jesus was real or that he died on the cross or that he rose from the grave or that he ascended into heaven or that he was coming again I never doubted that but I never knew him personally Biblical Christianity is not a relig religion. It's a relationship with the living Lord Jesus. Do you have that this morning?
And if you do have it, you know that you're saved. As Dave brought out this morning, why not follow him in believer's baptism? And I'm glad he said what he did this morning. I, in my heart of hearts, I pray that it happens to him <laughs> what he did to me. We baptize people, and it's hard. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's hard for fat boys to get out of jeans when they're wet. <laughs> it's hard to get them on on a dry day, but I mean, when they're wet. And I was ready to go. And preacher, there's some more people that want to be baptized. <laughs> And I tried to get those. It wasn't pretty, and I'm glad nobody was there. And I'm praying that it happens to him. Yeah, he says that right now. He says that right now, but, oh, his day's coming. But it's a wonderful thing when people who are saved have that desire to identify with the Lord. Young people, older people, whatever, to say, I want people to know that Jesus died for me. He was buried and he rose again. I'm dead to myself and I'm raised to walk in this new life that he's given me. And we come not for salvation to be baptized, but because when we are saved, we have that desire to identify with him and his death, his burial, his res resurrection. And also, we have that desire to not only identify, but to be obedient to him. Well, maybe you're here this morning and you're saved and you're identified, but you don't have a church home. I mean, you may come and you may worship with everybody else, but you know it's a wonderful thing to belong, to be a part of the family of God. And as God is leading you, we want you to know that you're welcome. We'll have an invitation. We'll invite people to come. Not for me, not for the country church, but for the Lord. For the Lord. Let's stand and pray. Father, we do thank you for your word, for your power, for your presence. Lord, knowing what you want to do, what you will do, if we'll surrender all that we are to all that you are. So, Father, we know that the devil will do everything within his power to keep people from coming to you. But we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, give people the conviction and give them the power to step out and to let go and let you have your way. We'll meet them at the front and pray with them. Father, whatever that decision, may it bring glory to you for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we sing, and God's Holy Spirit deals with your heart, step out, let go, let God have his way. Just as I am, just like you are. One plea, but that you can't change anything. But he can change me, everything. And that thou beats me come to Amen. thee, O and you, Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am.
born, O Lamb of God, God. I come. Lamb of God, I'm coming. I come. I've put it off too long. Just as You've given me this I day, am, this I hour, would be this long, moment. But mercy and Lord, I'm coming. And grace, my I'm believing your promise. I'm claiming your word. Now to glory in your cross, O Lamb, Lamb of God. Of God. I'm coming. I come. I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise. Just as I am, thy love unknown hath broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yes, thine alone. Lamb of God, I'm coming. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? We'll not drag out the invitation. But when I feel like there's somebody still that needs to make a decision, we're going to hunker down and just give them another opportunity to come. And you'll know that this verse is for you. And God's speaking to you. God's leading you. How are you going to respond to him? This verse is yours. Will you come? Call to Jesus, I surrender. All Lord, I'm surrendering. Him I and I'm coming. I and I'm turning loose. And I'm letting you have your way. His presence daily. Sing it to the Lord. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I Surrender all. Thank you, and you may be seated. And just be thankful that this isn't Brazil. Because in Brazil, they sing that song, and then they take up the offering. Whoa! Okay. Mark, wherever you're at. You know, I couldn't help but notice in the sermon text this morning that um, there was nobody in that room that could have doubted that worship was taking place because of the fragrance that Mary poured out. And I kind of sensed that here this morning. There was no doubt that worship occurred uh, here this morning, refreshing, refreshing fragrance. Guests, we're grateful that you uh, are here today. If there's any way that we can minister to you or your family, please let us know that by annotating it on your guest card and we would count it a privilege uh, to be able to minister to you and I'll pause for a moment and let our pastor share these decisions okay this morning we have Joel Seal 
and Carissa Seal, who were saved, identified, along with Kenan Seal and Casey Seal. They're all saved, identified, and they come on promise of letter <laughs> from the sister church. And Joanne Doan saved, Adelifi identified, and the Lord's led her here. And if you rejoice, <laughs> will you let her know? Amen. We have a responsibility to pray for them. But guess what? They have a responsibility to pray for all of us. I think we got the best deal on that. Before Mark makes the rest of the announcement, don't forget youth camp as God lays it upon your heart. Camp is a life-changing experience for our youth. It's not cheap, but no young person has to stay home because they don't have the money because we want to make sure that they get to go. Amen? Mark, please. One of the benefits of our folks coming forward this morning is they get to stand while I do the announcements. So, uh, I don't know if they're real delighted about that. Uh, a lot of good things in your bulletin. Make sure you read it. Uh, don't forget to vote, okay? Uh, early voting's over, but uh, make sure you vote uh, and, and take on that responsibility. The Awana party for Wednesday has been postponed because it may rain, uh, so they're going to reschedule. Um, that uh, that event right there, there you see we're that's we're faith. counting on praying that the, that's going to work, uh, but there will be country kids this Wednesday night, but it's from seven to eight. So just want to make sure that we have an opportunity for the little ones to to uh, enjoy some time uh, together. And don't forget, as Butch mentioned this morning about our attic and his message and the ministry we do there. There are some opportunities there uh, for you to contribute. So just want to remind you of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Let's stand together, and uh, Billy, would you come and close us out in prayer, and then we'll sing our, sing our way out today. Let us pray. Lord, it's good to be in your house this day to be able to worship as free American Christians. We just ask you to guide and direct us in our thoughts and actions as we go through life. We pray that if there's someone here that may want to have Christ come into your life, that you will answer today. Don't wait until it's too late. I'd like to see Brother David put those jeans on again. We just ask you to bless our first responders, our military, our church, our civic and government leaders, that they might come to you and act in accordance with your will and desires. Be with us, Lord, as we depart this day, that we will travel to and from in safety. These favors and blessings I ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing that chorus one more time. Jesus, to you we lift our eyes. Jesus, our glory and our pride. We adore you, behold you, our Savior ever true. Oh, Jesus, we turn our eyes. See you Wednesday night.